bit of filming and I had a pair of paws on my side. Young smudges come to join me. And here he is. <laughs> Hi Steve. <laughs> You know how to park them in sail. That's for sure. God bless. They just did the horn for the skull in front, and the poor girls there. Where are they? They nearly capsized their canoe because it made them jump. Oh, set off now we've just been waiting for the washing machine to finish its heat cycle yeah. and now we can get gone and carry on up the bridge water stopping for water and wait there you go see you later continuing our journey on the bridgewater canal we leave Lim and make an overnight stop just outside dunham town the next morning we carry on and pass through altrincham and sail dodging all the rowing boats and then swinging left or port at Walters Meeting before ending up at Worsley, although we won't complete that in this video. And this lovely three story uh, canal side property is up for sale for 375000 which isn't bad actually. Some stunning gardens here. Just look at this one. Stand a bit. <laughs> oh, you'll have to stay on there now. You're too late. <laughs> Everyone's been telling us that there is water at Lloyd's Bridge, which is this one just behind us. But we've just spent half an hour looking for the tap only to find there's an Elson there, but there's no drinking water. So if anybody tells you there's water at Lloyd's Bridge, there isn't, that we know of anyway. Hello, dog. I did a bit of filming and I had a pair of paws on my side. Young smudges come to join me. Now he's looking for money to come and join us. No sign of it yet. Oh, the cracking place. I think I filmed this last time we come through. It's right on the water's edge and you can't get much closer to the water's edge than that. What do you say to that, eh? Gorgeous. All that is all one building up to, I think up to here, where the ring is in the wall. It's beautiful, eh? 
and then it's got this old derelict warehouse next to it. We're now passing Agden Wharf, according to Chris. It is. Yeah, it is. Reminds me a little bit of Winsham Wharf. Very really similar looking. This is Lim Marina, where they make lovely wide vanes. That one looks gorgeous in black, I've got to admit. But one of our subscribers mentioned that he's moored here. It's home of Steve Perrin, apparently. At least we think it is, that's what he told us. So we're on the lookout for a blue wide beam. Be nice to catch up with him if he's around. The camera's frozen. Yeah, it's not, it's just stopped. Just as you're coming past here. The internet's not very good here, is it? No, the signal's gone a bit, yeah. And here he is. <laughs> Hi, Steve. Oh, Thanks no. Never mind. Never mind. Good hey, to see you, though. Water, you? Number the old number three. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Thank it's you very much. It's Lovely. It's stuttered. It's back again, but it's very stuttery. Right. You'll notice at some of the bridge holes, these old rusty looking cranes. But um, they are actually still in use. They used to drop these heavy uh, stop planks into the canal into those slots so that they can dam up the canal if there's a problem because there are no locks here remember it's 30 miles of lock free cruising so they need to be able to stop lock it to work on the uh, canal Well, we're now stopped near a pub called the Old Number Three at a water point. But unfortunately, there's a bit of a queue. There are two boats filling up at the moment, and then we're next. So we're taking the opportunity to get a wash load done while we're waiting, and then uh, we'll move back. And there's the pub. It's called the Old Number Three for some reason. I think it's because it's by Bridge Three, maybe. I don't know. After what seems an age, we're now finally getting underway and carried on. We've now got a full water tank. Chris has managed to get two wash loads done. So now we're continuing our journey. Uh, either Little Bollington, which is just around the corner, or Dunham Massey, somewhere like that. We'll see what we find. Well, we were going to moor up here just before Bolling Aqueduct. And unfortunately, there's a very poor internet signal, and I think that's because there is um, power cables just running to our left. So we're going to carry on a little bit further and uh, get over the aqueduct. Then uh, we'll see if we can find somewhere else with hopefully a bit more internet. But there is a sighting of our very first goslings. Well, that's us for today. We found a lovely mooring outside Dunham Town, it's called. A uh, bit of a, a wild mooring, if you like. There's absolutely nothing here. There's a few boats way off in the distance there, one in the corner and one further round. But apart from that, we've got the place to ourselves at the moment. So uh, we may stay here a couple of days, depends on the internet, or we may move on. Don't know yet. Just before going to bed, I went outside to check on the mooring lines, as I usually do, and was confronted with this stunning sight in the night sky of the Northern Lights.
The lights were seen by millions of people across the UK, but these are the ones that we saw that night. And to think we spent an absolute fortune on a Norwegian cruise just to see this site and didn't see a thing. And yet here we are on our own boat in England seeing this stunning view. She's feeling rather summery today. She's got her summer hat on. <laughs> it's sun up your eyes. <laughs> Good morning everybody. Uh, we're now making our move along the Bridgewater Canal. We're gonna go through sail today and possibly stop at the Trafford Centre so Chris can have a wander around. But unfortunately, our GoPro has finally decided it's not gonna accept a personal um, external power supply. So we haven't got a GoPro on this morning, so Chris is sitting up the front there, bless her, playing GoPro for me. She's uh, sitting up there doing some video recording from the front. That's good of her, isn't it? Now this is now unrecognisable. This is the old lino works. And when we came through here last time, it was a building site. And uh, look what they've done to it now. It is a shame such lovely old buildings have uh, had to be butchered to save them. But this is all that's left of the lino works. Shortly to become apartments by the look of it. Like them or hate them, these apartments are designed to look like a ship. And uh, there's two blocks of them. Got to admit, they've got a great outlook on to the canal. That's the side. certainly know how to park them in sail, that's for sure. stretch of the canal is known as the Sail Mile and it's perfect for rowers, canoeists and uh, today is no exception, the weather's brought them out, there's lots of rowers on the canal today. So it's taken a little bit longer than it normally would to get along here but uh, what's the rush, it's a perfect day so just enjoying it. just to let the, the skull or whatever know that we're about. It's a very popular stretch this one for canoeists etc on the river especially on a Saturday morning.
Yeah, one lot have stopped. <coughs> the other, oh, there could be rowing eights or sixes. The others were still powering down, so Steve had to sound the horn a couple of times. Because actually, they're on the wrong side of the canal, going the way that they're going. Thanks to Steve's horn, they've now all of them have pulled in on the other side. We're being very good, we are thanking them for stopping. Well, that's three. I think they were. We've gone past and now. Another set are just coming past the wide beam, so I think we'll have to let them in a bit. It does look as if they've slowed down and they're turning, so that's good. And there's the little hooter just to let them know where we are. They have got one person facing us, but I really don't think they've got a good vantage point of seeing where everybody else is. Oh, and the single skulls pulled in as well, so that's good. Oh, bless. They just did the horn for the skull in front. And the poor girl was there. Where are they? There. Nearly capsized their canoe because it made them jump. Oh, no. <laughs> Cafe boat. They must do a roaring trade, especially on a day like today. Lovely picnic area behind them. Ideal spot to be. I overheard the rowers saying that they're going to stop and leave the boat and go to the cafe. Lots of people taking the advantage of it. I can't say I blame them. It looks like the coffee boat is doing a roaring trade this morning. Like I said, the canal just goes on for a good mile, mile and a half. Yeah, that's Beautiful artwork on that. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Long may it last. <laughs> We've often seen this chain link ferry moored up on one side of the canal and often wondered how it operates. Is it wound with a wheel or is it uh, pulled along by hand? Well, today we actually saw it in use and it turns out it's pulled across the canal and uh, there were two people waiting on the other side with trolleyfuls of shopping. Often wondered how they did that. Now you can see they pull it across. Beautiful reflection of the <clears throat> the bridge and the steps at the side. Lovely, another lovely bridge. We're hopefully going to just moor up briefly so that I can just pop to a shop 
just to get bread and milk because that's all I need. If not, I'll tie up to the handrails. Managed to find some rings on the towpath side opposite the uh, visitor moorings and there are shops nearby so Chris wants to go and get some food. We're going to carry on a little bit further but that's us for now. A good deed for the day. Timeless. He was coming in and uh, we were leaving so he's having our rings that we just vacated. Well that's it Chris has got us shopping so we're on the move yet again and uh, we're going to try and find a mooring outside of sale. Um, in the past we've been advised it's not a good place to stop. I can't see why and uh, I've no, no reason to suspect otherwise but um, we're going to go on anyway because it's still only midday and we feel there's, with the weather as it is, we've still got some cruising time behind us so we're going to keep going. That's it, we're on our way again. I've uh, been to Sainsbury's, got me shopping. And as a bonus, I've got us a Chinese for tea tonight. We do like our Chinese from Sainsbury's on a Saturday. <laughs> Meeting. 
morning in the other direction. Yeah, I will. Um... All the different bridges and pipes going across. Just approaching Waters Meeting. Quite why it's called that, I don't really know because it's all the Bridgewater can Canal along here. But as other boaters have said on their vlogs, if you go up that way, that takes you up towards Manchester and the Salford Keys. But we want Liverpool, so we're going this way. On to Liverpool via this route. It's such a well known junction, it's hardly signposted if at all, and it's very um, nondescript apart from its lovely wrought iron bridges. But uh, Walters Meeting is a significant turning point on the canal. As we come along this stretch of the canal, the smell of breakfast cereal is almost overpowering. And it's hardly surprising because this is the Kellogg's factory. Kellogg's, for those abroad that don't know, manufacture breakfast cereals and have done for many a year. And uh, many, many moons ago, here used to be a loading and offloading bay for the narrowboats to come in. Now, sadly, cut short and a car park. But, uh, it must have been a real hive of activity in its day. This section along here looks quite green and leafy but don't let that deceive you because behind these bushes and trees are huge industrial and office estates that run from Walters Meeting all the way along this stretch all hidden behind the bushes so what might look green and lovely is only a small corridor through the industrial estates. That's it for this week, thanks for watching and do join us next week as we cross one of the seven wonders of the canal world, the Barton Aqueduct. So take care, look after yourselves and bye for now.